Thank you for the introduction and a big thanks to the organizers for inviting me again to the Biohackathon. It's my second Biohackathon after the one three years ago. <coughs> and I'll speak about the glyco RDF and RDF representation for glycans or carbohydrates. So, uh, why should you be interested in glycobiology? Usually, when I say that I'm working on carbohydrates, most people first of all think of nutrition tables. That's where carbohydrates are known, but uh, they are also important in glycoconjugates, glycoproteins, glycolipids. For example, in glycoproteins, which is the most common post translational modification of proteins, they can alter protein properties and not only switch on, switch off like a phosphorylation, but uh, fine tune, you have multiple possible glycans that can be attached to a protein to a single site, so it can change proteins by properties. And proteins and lipids can be anchored in the cell surface from glycocalyps, a layer of carbohydrates on the protein surface which first of all is important for cell-cell interactions, but also used by many pathogens to attach to a cell, enter a cell. And that's a big topic in glycobiology research. For example, uh, the fact that serves us, that saves us from bird flu is the fact that humans have slightly different carbohydrates on their cells, so avian influenza viruses cannot that easily enter human cells just because of different carbohydrates. From this, uh, glycoinformatics had evolved as an area in bioinformatics to uh, deal with uh, carbohydrates. And here we have some special features that differ from genes and proteins. And first of all, the uh, building blocks, the monosaccharides, can be linked in multiple ways. That means you don't have the same kind of linkage all of the time as you have in a protein, the glycosid, uh, sorry, the uh, peptide bond is always the same. Whereas here you can have 1, 3, 1, 6, 1, 4 linkages, which also means that the glycans can be branched and not just linear. Another thing is the representation. For example, often in publications, you see these kind of cartoons to represent the glycans, which of course are not easy to deal with in databases. You can create them, but not easily pass them. And these textual representations also are not that easy to store because they are not unique, at least in this way, just interchange the 1316 arm and you have a di different uh, string. So, as a consequence, first of all, because of the branching, you can't adopt uh, classical bioinformatics algorithms, which are written for linear sequences. So, new algorithms have to be developed, and because of the uh, sequence or structure problem, uh, we also need new uh, formats to store the data. Unfortunately, many resources have thought of their own way of representing the glycans. So you have very different kinds of residues of <coughs> structures or uh, representations around, which makes it uh, difficult to cross the databases or to change data. And if you have a um, more uh, detailed look into the uh, structures here, you will see that they do not only differ in the way the building blocks are linked, but also in the nomenclature of the building blocks, even in the definition of where to split between different building blocks. To uh, 
be able to actually uh, stop this problem and do uh, provide cross links between these databases and also uh, with other resources like proteomics for the glycoproteins and protein covered interactions. Uh, three years ago, we started with the glyco RDF representation and we also added possibilities to add other data, literature, experimental evidence, and so on to the data sets. Just an overview of the main. Uh, can I use this one? Ah, that's easier. So uh, the main classes are, of course, the compound class to store the actual glycan structures. Then we have references for literature, for experimental uh, evidence, and also for taxonomy. And we have a core reference compound that links everything together. Why did we do it this way? Actually, in most databases, it's stored in a way that we have links between a glycan and a citation, a glycan and taxonomy and stuff like that. But uh, the advantage of this um, way to store it is that you can store information such as this compound was found in a sample of that species proved by that experiment and you can read about that in that publication. So all these information, all these data are together in one place and for example, if you find, uh, if you remember, I told you uh, that um, influenza usually does not go to humans from birds because of different carbohydrates. And now you might find an entry in a database that this uh, avian carbohydrate is also found in humans. And then you might uh, wonder, hmm, is it a problem, a wrong database entry, or is it really existing? So you need to know where this was published or how this was found. And if you just have a link between the compound and the species, and another link between the compound and the reference, and you have hundreds of references for that compound, then you have to go through all of them to find that publication that mentions this species. And if you have this reference compound, you can uh, easily find the correct publication. Here's just some example how we store the stuff. And I mentioned that we have these different formats. So two years ago we were discussing which format to use actually for the glyco RDF and after a while Jervin, who already presented this morning, said yeah, let's agree to disagree and use all the formats so we can store the glyco structures or sequences in any format and just give the format so that parsers know which format is given by now, there are translators available that can translate, and of course, with uh, same as text, it's easy to link between them. We have some information about uh, residue composition, or an example of how to add literature here. As a proof of concept, we showed that we could link with this over multiple databases, which before we had GlycoRDF was not possible in glycoscience. For example, from the Japanese JGDB, if you want to know to which uh, proteins uh, this glycan uh, links, then you can go from here to another database, GlycomeDB, the reference is in this database, and find uh, another sequence format for GlycoCP, which is also used in Unicard KB, 
and that database links to Uniprot, so query over all the databases in one Spark query gives you the answer in one query. What are our plans for BioHackathon this year? We want to refine some concepts, especially uh, improve the integration with other RDF definitions. Proteomics uh, is interesting, but also uh, PubChem, definitely. And I would like to create a monosaccharide ontology because um, I am working on this monosaccharide notation problem that I mentioned before, that many databases use different names for the same residue. We have some code to solve that. And now, of course, it's interesting to create some relations. Again, interaction with PubChem will be very interesting in this respect, so that uh, we can make use of existing code as much as possible and don't uh, do double work or even worse, uh, do double work that is incompatible with already existing stuff. And the last point is um, that this monosaccharide DB, the resource that covers this notation problem, uh, will also be extended to support another notation that was developed here in Japan to make that more useful as well. So now on, at the end of my talk, I would like to thank you for the... Uh, <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> thank you for your kind attention and thanks again for allowing me to be here and speak.